So this lesson is just going to be a kind of general lesson about poetry and um, it applies to anything you're studying to do with poetry really. So it doesn't really matter what exam board you're on. It can be the Cambridge IGCSE, Edexcel, AQA, CCEA, WJC. I teach all of those and a mixture of levels from those as well, so the A-levels and the GCSEs. And um, I tend to just follow the same process regardless of what poetry collection I'm teaching, what time the poem's from. I just find it gives you the most in-depth version of revision or version of kind of knowledge of a poem. And also it stops you from panicking and thinking you could just infinitely make more notes on your poem and you could just go on forever because mostly when I teach the poetry collections, people get sort of freaked out by the fact that there's you know 15 or 20 poems and when do you stop with a poem and move on to the next one or how do you know that you've done enough to be able to write a good essay so this process is a shortcut to getting a really good grasp on a poem without needing to go into infinite depth with that poem and if you can fill out this process with each poem that you do you should have a good basis to be writing an essay on it. So you should feel confident by the time you've done this to be able to write a really solid essay on your poem. You can always add later on as well. So the first time you look at a poem, you want to make sure that you get to grips with it to a point where you understand it quite well. And then when you revise, go back and deepen your understanding. So use revision websites, read other people's essays on it, talk to your friends talk to your mum, anyone who will help you figure out this poem and give you different angles of interpretation that will help you in your final essays when you come to write them. So yeah, so I've kind of separated it into categories that are good to fill out when you're analysing a poem. We'll have a look at the story and summary first, so this section. So before you do anything deeper or more complex, you might find that you've got like an inclination to just suddenly start looking at detail and picking out a simile or picking out repetition or metaphor or rhyme or rhythm. Before you do any of that, even if that's what your brain wants to do, you want to make sure that you've understood the whole story. And it might seem kind of obvious, but it's easy to get lost in the detail with a poem because there's such detailed little things. You know, your brain just really wants to like <laughs> zoom in on a metaphor or pick apart an image, but actually every poem is a self-contained piece of meaning. So you have to understand the shape of the story or the shape of the idea of the poem before you start analysing in detail, because if you don't get that overall structure, your analysis is not going to be that accurate. So the, the story and the summary is always the first place to start and before you kind of delve into the themes or the language, make sure that you feel quite confident with that story. So these are ways to do the story then. Write a stanza by stanza account of what happens in the poem, especially important if it's a longer poem or it has multiple stanzas. So you'll notice with multiple stanza poems, which is most of them to be honest, there'll be a change in progression of the story or a change in the tone or mood as the stanzas continue from each other. So look at a stanza individually, figure out what happens and then look at the next one and think is the same thing happening or is it changing or developing in some way. So that helps you to think about progression, development and changes. Quite often a poem might start one way and end a totally different way or it might have a shift in the middle which we call a volta which means that it's giving you a different angle or a different mood from what was originally established in the first section of the poem. So understand stanza by stanza, if it's one single long stanza, understand line by line what happens in the poem. I'm going to give you a couple of tips on this. So um, instead of focusing, I know I just said look at line by line, but instead of focusing on each line, Look at the punctuation and focus on each sentence. So one thing that's difficult about poems is the where the sentence ends is not the same as where the line ends very often. If it does end where the line ends, we call that end stopping. So that's a structure technique that you can talk about. But usually, at least some of the lines in the poem will flow onwards. So 
if you look at the punctuation, look at the end of the sentences, that will make it easier for you to pick apart the meaning of the poem and what happens. So instead of it feeling really abstract, when you look at the sentences, it starts to read a little bit more like a story. So it's easier for you to kind of get a grasp on, on that summary of the story. Another thing to do is if you're stuck, you can use help. Um, so ask the teacher, send me a message if you're really stuck on a poem because I'm happy to do anything with my YouTube videos. You know, if, uh, if people are really struggling with something, I like hard work, so you know, send me a message and I'll try and figure out what your poem's about and give you some critique and I'll probably turn it into a video and can help other people that way as well. So ask your teacher, ask me, um, ask friends, ask um, or kind of use revision websites, um, compare notes, so that you definitely understand the story. With poetry, you don't want to feel like you're just struggling by yourself and you don't get it and that's it. You're just never going to understand the poem. There's always ways around gaps in your knowledge. And there's been so many poems that I've read and I just do not get them. And I've had to you know, <laughs> go ask someone or read about it more. So it's not cheating. It's not like a weakness in yourself. It's, it's actually a sensible thing to do with poetry and with any text, to be honest to um, go and, you know, read further or research further to a point where you feel confident with a story. Like I say, there's not too much point in going into the language or the themes or anything deeper with the poem until you understand the story. So make sure that you're confident with that before you move on and go deeper into it. Um, the story and the message the final point or the message of the poem is important as well. So when you're really confident with that, when you've written out your story slash summary, which, you know, for most poems, that's like two paragraphs, maybe it's not, not very big. Um, you can go to your themes and ideas. So a theme, if you're not sure, is a message or an idea or a big kind of complex concept that a piece of literature explores. So it might be something like love or death or war or betrayal or relationships or life, you know, anything that is a big idea in the world that a lot of people experience, but we don't necessarily have a set way of, you know, how to approach that. That's kind of the point of literature. That's what it tends to explore. So all poems that you study as part of literature will definitely have themes and ideas. They'll probably have more than one theme or idea and they'll have a specific kind of angle that the poet is exploring that theme from. So as an example, one poem might have the message that love is beautiful and the most amazing thing in the world. And another one might be quite jaded and it might think that love is pointless and silly and we shouldn't waste our time with love. So as well as the theme, figure out the message or the statement for each theme. We call that a thematic statement. So make sure you understand what is the poet's personal take on that theme that they're exploring. As well as figuring out the themes, make sure you've got quotes for each theme. The reason being, most exam questions will be theme-based. So it'll say something like, how does the poet strikingly create the idea of relationships in this poem. Sorry, that's a bit of a bad example, but you know what I mean. How does this poem explore conflict? How does the poet express attitudes to power? You know, those types of questions should be reasonably familiar to you if you've practiced poetry questions. And basically, they all, they're all theme-based questions. So most poetry questions are gonna be on a theme. So if you really understand the themes well and you can easily access quotes for that theme and analyze those quotes, it's gonna just be so much easier for you in the exam and it'll stop you panicking and feeling like you've not got a grasp on the poetry question. So themes and ideas are your next step after your story summary. 
Then we go to attitudes and values. So an attitude is kind of like somebody's, I don't know, personal feeling or personal connection with something. So my attitude towards poetry is I love poetry. Your attitude might be different, especially if you're watching this lesson, you're probably not super like in love with poetry or you're a bit confused by it. Um, you know, or you might have a similar attitude. I find poetry quite mysterious and I feel it's a bit like a puzzle that we have to kind of unpick and figure out. So that type of attitude I find to poetry helps you analyze. Um, and then, you know, people express attitudes to themes. So like I was saying before, the poet's attitude to love might be that they think love is amazing or it might be that they think love is pointless. They might think that war is necessary and being a soldier is an honorable thing or they might think war is also pointless and silly and we shouldn't ever have wars because they cause a lot of destruction and chaos for people so figure out the attitudes and values of the writer and just add a couple of notes here so um attitudes of the poet values a value is like your morals your beliefs so in our society, we value education, for example. Most people think getting a decent grade on your GCSE or your A-levels or getting a decent uni degree is a valuable thing to do. So that's one of our values in our culture. Um, some people have religious or spiritual values and other people are more atheistic or secular with their values. So figure out the values that are expressed in that poem. Some of those values will be the poet themselves. Some of them might be the characters. So in this case, we call it speaker or persona. The speaker in the poem is not always the poet himself, so be careful with that or herself. Um, and then the addressee, the person that the poem is being spoken to. Sometimes there's a personal addressee. Um, and then other the characters present in the poem, depending on what kind of poem it is. And then of the time in which the poem was written. Time in which, time which? Yeah, time in which. The <laughs> My grammar just escapes me sometimes, sorry. Yeah, the time in which the poem was written. So what are the beliefs of the people at the time? If you're doing a Victorian poem, for example, people are hyper-religious in that time relative to how they are nowadays. They have a belief that um, their culture is really advanced and in some ways superior to other cultures because of the British Empire and because of um, them being kind of advanced in terms of technological and scientific developments. So Victorians have different values to what as modern people our values would be now. So make sure that you understand the beliefs and the values of the culture from which the, the piece of poetry was written. Quite often that's the same as the poet, but it can be different as well. So a lot of poets try and change the, the values of their society. So quite often a poem might be about how in society we think one thing, but this particular poet has a different take on it and wants to change our minds. So sometimes the cultural, social, political values or beliefs of the people at the time the poem was written is totally different from what the poet actually thinks himself or herself. So yeah, attitudes and values. Once you've done your story, your summary, themes, attitudes, then you go into the language like the nitty gritty little pieces <laughs> and you start analysing those in more detail. So we go for form and structure. I tend to do this first because Form and structure points tend to be more about the poem in general, whereas language points mean generally they're um, more specific. Sorry, generally they're specific. You know what I mean. So if you do a form point, that's about the whole shape of the poem. If you do a structure point, that's usually about one section of the poem and how it relates to another. If you do a language point, it'll just be about one metaphor or one piece of alliteration. So the form and structure, because they're broader points to make, it makes sense to do those first. So think about the length of the poem. Is it long or short and why? Does that somehow reflect the meaning? 
Because when you write a poem, you don't have very many words or much time to express your point. Almost everything about a poem is possible to analyse. So a novel is like a sprawling long thing and some sections of it will be better for analysis than others. But a poem, you can pick up on almost anything and analyse it because it's like a compressed idea, like a really shortened, compact expression of an idea. So if the poem is long or short, there's a reason. Um, you want to think about line length. I'll put that later, actually. The line length as well. If the lines are long or the lines are short, if they're even or uneven, is there a reason? The stanzas, which is a word that I've used quite a few times, um, they're basically like a when you have a line break in a poem and it looks a bit like a paragraph. Don't call it a paragraph, call it a stanza, because that's the that's the kind of actual term that we give to poem sections instead of novel sections. So yeah, the stanzas, are they long, short, are they regular, irregular? So think about regularity. Um, do they have a set structure or do they change sometimes, especially modern poetry? I have a super long stanza and then like a few short stanzas. So it's kind of degenerating and becoming quicker as it goes on. Or vice versa, it might start short and, and build and get longer and more complex as it goes on. So the stanzas, the length of them, the type of them, whether they're regular, all of that is important stuff to comment on. I just want to mention as well before I go into more form structure that if you're aiming for like a level seven or above or level kind of like an A, A star level at GCSE and A level. And also if you're doing university degrees and you're thinking about, um, you know, how can I do better on my poetry essays? You can't get a good grade unless you equally analyze form and structure as well as language. So sometimes people are stuck at a low grade because they're only focusing on language and they're not going into the form and structure. So make sure you learn form and structure terms and that you have good form structure notes on all of your poems that you're analysing. And then when you write an essay, make sure you have a kind of mixture of form structure and language points. So, yeah, line length, short, long, uneven, even, why? Why is always the crucial thing. You'll notice I've written why loads. Why is the bit where we actually analyse? If you explain why or how something is working, that's when you're analysing. Volta. Uh, not all poems have a volta, but if they do, it tends to be an easy thing to talk about and it's an impressive technique. So you should definitely use it if it's relevant to your question. So Volta, I kind of touched on it earlier, it's where there's like a shift, basically. So it might go from third person to first person, it might go from a happy to a sad tone, it might go from um, past tense to present tense. There's different ways to create a shift, but it's when there's a very noticeable deliberate shift somewhere in the middle of the poem. And then if the poet's done that, there's a definite reason. So make sure you understand why. I'm going to just write why in there as well. Sejura and, uh, sejour and end stopping. So this one and that one. They are more kind of punctuation based points. But anytime you talk about punctuation, that becomes a structure point. So it's worth talking about punctuation and poetry. Like I was saying with the story summary, the way that a poem ends a sentence is not the same as the way it ends a line, usually. So it's worth talking about where the punctuation comes and why it's um, created in that way. So sejouras are long pauses in poems indicated by colon or semicolon. So there might be short pauses indicated by a comma. And then there might be a sejoura, which is a longer pause. These tend to be less frequent. And when you see them in a poem, it's kind of like the poet saying, I'm going to give you a pause here to think about what I've just said. So every time you find a colon or semicolon, usually what's just come before is quite important to that poem. 
So this is helpful also when you do your unseen exams, because if you're trying to get to grips with a poem quickly, you can just look at things like sejour and think, okay, this is an important message in this section of the poem. So think about why there's a long pause. Obviously that's to make us focus a bit more on the idea. Um, it's to create a breathing space, which is normally a space where we reflect on the ideas of the poem. But there might be other reasons as well, like it, are they trying to convey a sense of breathlessness, for example? Um, has something dramatic happened which shocked the poet and he wants to convey that sense of shock to you? The way that punctuation is used is always reflecting meaning in poems. So just always try and connect it to the meaning. End stopping is a full stop. So that's a similar kind of thing. Like, why is that the point at which the sentence stops? Um, if the line or the end of the stanza ends in a full stop, we call that end stopping. So if the end of the line corresponds with a full stop, you can call that an end stopped stanza or an end stop line. Again, why? Usually a sense of finality or creating a break, that type of thing. On jambement, which really I should have put after these, is um, the opposite to end stopping, where the lines continue across stanzas. You can use it across lines as well. So on jambement is a difficult technique to talk about because there's a flow of the poem and a kind of break in the poem at the same time, because there'll be a line, you know, running on to the next line. And as your eye skips back to the next line, you will naturally pause a little bit while you're reading that poem. So think about why there's a flow as well as a line break there. When you talk about rhyme and metre, these are also form structure points. So I don't know about your teachers. My teacher, when I was at school, always drummed it into me that I have to talk about rhyme scheme or lack of rhyme scheme, if there isn't one, um, and metre or rhythm. There's a lot you can do on meter. So if you're aiming for those top levels, read a lot about meter and how to analyze meter in poetry because it will serve you well in your essays. Yeah, so think about rhyming, rhyming patterns. Think about assonance and half rhyme. Think about consonants where the sounds of the consonant letters are repeated but the vowel changes. And always ask yourself why. So the language, I'm not gonna go into loads here. I do have other courses that um, explain language. So just have a look at those either on my YouTube or on my um, Scribbly school, if you, if you feel like that would help you. But language is basically the one that people tend to know about when they do poetry. So things like alliteration, imagery, metaphor, simile, all of those count as language points. You have to be able to analyze those as well. Once you've done all your kind of little detailed techniques, so the form, structure, and language, you want to move on to context and critics. So for GCSE, these are not super important. Double check the exam that you're doing, whether you need context or not. Some you do, some you don't. Um, critics are not super important for GCSE, but they are for A-level and university level. So the deeper you go into context and critics, the more advanced your exam will tend to be. Little bits of context help you understand your poetry. So even if it's not a specific box you have to tick on your exam for GCSE, it's worth knowing a little bit about the poet um, or the time period um, or kind of like the ideas behind the poem, how they connect to the actual story or the message. If you're doing critics, there's three ways you can do it. So you can do alternative interpretations. If you're aiming for a high grade at GCSE, you want to be able to do those. So that's why you look at one thing and you analyze it one way. And then you say, on the other hand, we could think about it in this totally other way. So that's alternative on the one hand. On the other, it could be argued. However, some people may think those types of phrases help you get alternative interpretations. Um, and then if you're doing A-level, you have to include something called critical concepts. 
which is eco-criticism, feminist critique, Marxist critique. Spell eco criticism. <laughs> I'm really bad at spelling, sorry. It's not my uh, strong point. Yeah, so critical concepts basically, ideas about what literature is doing and what the point of it is that you can then use to enhance your analysis in that poem. That's applicable at A level and university level for all your texts, so not just poetry, absolutely everything. So make sure you understand how to use those because they will serve you well. And also specific quotes from critics. Um, you can engage with those. You wanna use those to back up the argument you're making in your essay, but you also wanna dialogue with those and not necessarily always agree. So try and find some quotes that you think are just absolute nonsense and that's not what the poem's about so that you can kind of rip it to shreds in your essay because weirdly that will get you good marks. <laughs> um, that is the point of criticism. So yeah, don't worry too much about critics unless you're aiming for really high levels or you're in further education, so like A level, uni level. Up to context is what you really need for GCSE. The vocab list and possible essay questions are kind of like extensions. So if you're like me, you're a bit kind of obsessive and you like having a really, really detailed range of notes. I always think I'll forget something unless I write it down. So I'm like a compulsive note taker. I've actually got problems with it, I think. I need to just learn to not have to write everything. Um, but yeah, if you like writing absolutely everything like me, a vocab list, um, define important or difficult words. This can be helpful for, even if you're not an obsessive note taker, because it does help you get to grips with a poem. When you're reading and analyzing a poem, there should ideally never be a word that you don't know what it means. So if, if you don't know that word, at least look it up. And if you're quite thorough with your notes, write it down and define it. Possible essay questions. It just helps you with planning and prioritizing when it comes to re revision. Um, as part of your revision, you can write plans for these questions. Um, and as further part of these uh, of revision, you can practice essays from these questions. So even though you don't have to write possible essay questions at the bottom of your poetry notes, if you do that, it, it kind of saves you time in the long run and it helps you focus your revision as well. So I would recommend that. So I know I've kind of whizzed through this, um, but hopefully that makes sense to you. Screenshot each section of it so that you've got a record of it if you find that helpful. And uh, yeah, get used to analyzing your poems in these ways because in the end, you'll just feel a lot more confident with them. And you'll also get to a point where you feel like you can genuinely stop and you don't have to just do another five hours on the same poem because otherwise the, the trouble with poetry is you just go on forever. So hopefully that was a useful little mini lesson for you guys. Um, subscribe to my channel if you like my lessons. <laughs> hopefully someone does. Um, send me messages if you have any questions, if you think something's not clear, if you want me to do a specific lesson. I'm just kind of in the middle of filming a load of random stuff at the moment. So yeah, anything that helps me focus, I will appreciate. And um, yeah, thank you for listening and I'll see you guys soon.